If it was 500 feet, there was no way I could have lifted it. Oh my God. What's up? We're bringing it Yeah, in. this is the first time I've dealt with anything like this. downhill. That's right. <laughs> Different from the firehouse, split unit here in the barn. So a split unit, basically this head unit here is, a, is an electric heat pump and an air conditioning unit. This line set here in the black goes down to a condenser that's outside, attached to the outside of the barn, which I'll show you. And then, and th th that condenser is a two zone condenser because we've got another one of these head units in the garage to do the same heat and air conditioning for JC's live streaming studio. But when you have a small space like this or you're retrofitting something, it requires zero duct work whatsoever. So that is, that is the fan, that is the blower, that is the entire, that is the entirety of the equipment that's going inside of this apartment. So it makes for a very, very simple install and it's a very efficient unit as well, much better than, for example, uh, like a standard window air conditioner. So best of both worlds, specifically for this type of situation. You tend to do a lot of these in barns? Um, or just smaller spaces in general? Smaller spaces in general. It's yeah. a pretty, it's pretty much just like zoning. You can zone with these real easy. Yeah. Um, people like using them in their bedrooms. And so like this unit, what's the max square footage you would do with something like this? Three to 400 feet per ton. Got Excuse you. me. Got three you. to 400 got feet. Oh, so this is perfectly. Sized. Yep. Because we've got three tons. So we got a ton and a half for up here and a ton and a half for downstairs. Correct. <laughs> First box is in, making progress. Another, another reason why this tape out really works well for you. James the electrician just saw the couch, asked me what it was. I told him, he said, well, why don't I just put the electrical receptacle a little ways down? Now I'm not stuck with a plug behind a couch that I can't use and I've got something that's usable in a small space. Makes a big difference. So little things, but they translate into a lot more usability just by putting some simple blue tape on the floor. Yes. Today is the day we get power in the barn. thing with insulation everything's got to get done so you know as long as you have it in your head the order of operations you can really start anywhere so I'm gonna start in the upper ceiling rafters um, the collar ties and get as much done as I can here as the Sun comes up we get more light in here then I'll start diving into uh, to the sides I also have my buddy Doug coming up to help me because he's a real good dude and we're gonna stick him in there sorry Doug
not deep? We're still going. If it was 500 feet, there was no way I could have lifted it. Oh my God. What's up? We're bringing it Yeah, up. this is the first time I've dealt with anything like this. This is it. insane so well, maybe it isn't i don't know it's insane to me because i live in the city i'm used to cutting a street open connecting to uh connecting the city water but that is not the way we do it up in the mountains so these guys are pulling the entire pump out now the bummer is that i was going to wait to do this in phase two i was hoping that this was going to work and feed the apartment in the barn it's not so likely what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have to do my constant pressure system right now. Ken's getting me a number together on that so that I can figure out what it's gonna cost me tomorrow and then make that call. But assuming I can afford it right now, I'm gonna do it right now even though I don't want to and here's why. Phase two, the house renovation, is not that far away, maybe six months. So if I do some temporary fix here, that's money that I'm throwing down the down the drain, if you will, um, because I am putting constant pressure once I have three working bathrooms in the house and then another one in the barn. So these are the decisions that come up. This is why you have a contingency and you figure it out as you go. All right, plumbers are here and they've got the pump. Uh, Josh, if you don't mind, can you just run me through what you were saying before just about what, what kind is going to go on today? Because this is a process that not many are familiar with down where we live. Down in that hole, what we're going to do is, is we're going to drill the casing and we're going to hook a pitless adapter to it because the previous well that was here what hung on the top. And that really doesn't seal the well very good. So we're going to hang this on there and this makes it so it... This piece will go on the well, and this piece will go to the, the so pump. So basically you're taking the tension off of the line? Yeah, well it hung on the top of the well casing. It was a different different style setup. Okay. Um, it's an okay style, but you have to vent it. Um, it doesn't really se seal the top of the well casing very well. Um, this, what, by putting this in there, this puts the connection underground. Nice. So then we can extend the pipe up above the ground and seal it completely from all outside. So whatever. no more squirrels chewing through my wires. Right. <laughs> yep. Cool. And then obviously we upsize the pump so it's the proper size to handle what I need in the house. Yep. We're gonna put a bigger pump on, new pump wire, um, resecure everything to the the new pipe. Then from there we're gonna go in the house and we have a, a constant pressure driver that we have to hook up, and a little pressure tank in the van. Because when the when the water pump system runs, it has to have a, a cushion somewhere to expand into. Right. Um, but so that means that that massive tank is going. We're ripping that out. Correct. All that crap goes. Yep. So the system will be what half the size, if or more. This is the size of your pressure tank right here. Okay. This is it's a quarter of the size. Yeah. That's great. That. Okay. Cool. And now what this will do is this will give us like having city water pressure. Uh, the system that you have now operates on a pressure switch and it goes 30, 50. So it shuts, it turns on at 30 PSI and it shuts off at 50. So you have a, a water lag, you would call it, or pressure drop. Right. Um, so you notice that with the constant pressure, it doesn't matter what you're doing in your house, whether you're showering, running the dishwasher, laundry. So as you increase demand, the pump spins up faster. Correct. Holds Correct. that pressure constant. Correct. So it's just like village water. Got it. Yep. All right, cool. Good stuff. And then we're just going to use a... We got it steel, and now we're just going to take a piece of the Fernco and a plastic pipe, just as a connection between the well casing and the top, so you can get at it. Take I did, Chuck. That's great. So. But I mean, it's still going to be all the way that deep. So how mm -hmm. do you? You have a, a tool that reaches right down and lifts it up. Piece of one-inch galvanized pipe, pipe or whatever. Take a look at the top of that. that. You'll see where it's. Oh, the top is yeah. threaded. Yeah, oh. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Then you'll put a piece of pipe in there. Oh, and smart. It in. You yep. won't use plastic. You'll use black. I, I understand. I, I I get it though. That that's okay. I wasn't understanding when you said raise it up. So now yeah, I get it. So so it so it stays below ground. So it stays below frost. But yeah, then to get it out, you screw in the cast and you pull it, do what you got to do, put it back in, screw, and well, no, you don't screw it, you just drop it. Awesome. Okay. Shit, this is great. All right, huh? all right, all right. This is the exciting stuff. When a mechanical's come back on, when you got water running to a barn that never had water before, never had power before, becomes a home. So that's the new setup. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that's a little more robust than what was there. Yep, definitely. <laughs> that's what it's supposed to look like. Right. And this has got the wire coming so up. Now why are you putting the water right back down that hole? Because we're circulating it. Sending it in the house, cleaning all our pipes up and dumping it right back in the well. Okay. And then what we're doing is we're drawing the, the bleach that we just put in there. We're drying it down into the bottom of the well casing because what it'll do is it'll sit on top. So as you use the water pump, it'll draw it down to the bottom. Because remember, it's 150 feet. We want to clean feet. everything off right. the walls and all that, too. And, is yep, that, yep. And shock the inside to get rid of whatever bacteria is living in there or whatever. Because okay. remember, you got 150 foot of water down there. 125 feet, 150 feet right. of water that you're trying to fill with chlorine bleach. Holy so cow. you just circulate it. Got it. So this will run for how long? 15, 20 minutes. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was like hours or... No, oh, okay. just enough to circulate it through. You smell that, but it smells like a shock swimming pool. Yep. That's all we're doing to it is just yep. shocking it. Just cleaning everything up. Get cool. rid of all the bacteria. Rock and roll. Yep. We got water and we got electricity. Bam. Good day.